Greetings, Boogie fans! Michael here, and the Pokemon Sword and Shield Expansion Pass has already been confirmed to contain six new Galarian forms. Slowpoke, Slowbro, Slowking, and the three legendary birds. However, I am quite confident that we'll be getting more Galarian forms than just the confirmed six. I talk about in my trailer analysis how I think that Clara's bow could be indicating a Galarian Dustox, and therefore probably Beautifly as well. So since I love regional variants, this video is gonna be 10 Pokemon that I really want to see get Galarian forms in the Pokemon Sword and Shield DLC. And I'll only be discussing Pokemon that, at the time of writing this video, could still potentially get one. For a Pokemon to be eligible, it has to one, not be a part of the Sword and Shield Pokedex, and two, not have already been confirmed to be in the DLC in their regular forms. And that's really the only criteria. In the past, I would have said that any Pokemon that got a Mega Evolution or an Alola form was immediately disqualified from ever getting a Galarian form, but Slowbro and Meowth proved me wrong on that front. Also, I won't really be discussing Galarian evolutions because for those to occur, the Pokemon has to get a Galarian form to begin with. I'll just say up front that I think pretty much all of these Pokemon are viable candidates for a Galarian evolution, at least I'd like to see it, other than maybe like two or three because their base stat totals are a bit too high to get a new evolution. This list will be in no particular order, but I will save the Pokemon that I want most to get a Galarian form for last. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel and let's get started with number one, Camerupt. I have always liked Camerupt. I think it's a very solid looking and well-designed Pokemon and it being from my first region, Hoenn certainly doesn't hurt. I've used it a couple times in the past in some Hoenn playthroughs and in XD, and I really enjoyed doing so. Camerupt did get a Mega Evolution in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, but I still think it's deserving of an alternate form that's good. Mega Camerupt is definitely not the worst Mega, but I definitely don't like it. The big volcano oozing lava is pretty cool, but the ultra wide skirt looks pretty goofy, and the M on its forehead for Mega is just dumb. What kind of loser has an M on their forehead? <laughs> My idea for a Galarian Camerupt that Dark and Windy drew for me is turning it into a fire water type. The idea is that Camerupt finds itself on the Isle of Armor, a place with seemingly no volcanic activity. Additionally, it's surrounded by and seems to be pretty full of water, which of course Camerupt doesn't like because it's four times weak to it. So if you can't beat it, become it. Camerupt's body becomes more accustomed to the water with its feet changing to be more like a hippo's and being better built for traversing through the water. It becomes capable of using and generating water, but it still maintains the heating aspect of its body. When it heats up the water within its body, it can fire that scalding water out at its opponents. This design is inspired by geysers, such as Old Faithful. Both volcanoes and geysers have to do with blasting some hot fluid from the ground due to intense underground heat, and since Camerupt already represents one of those two things, I thought it would be cool for it to get another form that represents the other. This Camerupt concept would be the second fire water type Pokemon after Volcanion, and I really think there should be another one because Volcanion kinda sucks. It's a mythical Pokemon, so we never see it, and also it is definitely not a cool looking dude. I definitely think this really awesome type combination should be found on a cooler Pokemon. Besides, Volcanion's based on like steam engines which are artificially created hot water. My Galarian Camerupt is based on geysers which are naturally occurring hot water, so it's different. Next is a Pokemon I really want to get a Galarian form, not because I love the Pokemon itself, but because I really love the design idea for an Alola form for it that I came up with back in 2017. That being number two, Skarmory. There's a bird found mainly in New Guinea called the Cassowary. They are flightless birds with distinctive colorful heads and they are violent, mean things. Yeah, they've, they've killed quite a few people. Skarmory makes me think of cassowaries both because of its distinct head crest, but also because it always looks angry. 
Because of that connection that I saw, I would love to see Skarmory get a form that's based on the cassowary. It definitely would make more sense on the Isle of Armor because cassowaries are warm weather birds and the crown tundra is obviously very cold. Since it can no longer fly, it loses the flying type, but it gains the dark type to represent the aggressive nature of cassowaries. Its primary method of combat is its metal razor claws, just like how cassowaries fight. All right, now I've done two Isle of Armor focused ones, so let's do a Crown Tundra one. This design is another one I came up with back in 2017 for an Alola form I wanted to see, but I'm bringing it back because I really like the design idea. That being number three, Mag Cargo. Macargo or Mag Cargo, I don't really know which one, is clearly a Pokemon best built for volcanic areas, like Camerupt, but there really aren't any in Mainland Galar, the Isle of Armor, or the Crown Tundra. If Magcargo found itself there, it would need to adapt to not having the heat that it needs. This was my idea for an Alolan Macargo based on the cooled lava parts of the Hawaiian Islands. It obviously loses its fire typing, but it's replaced by the grass type as plants begin to grow on its body, since cooled lava is known to create very fertile soil. This design still works in Galar though, specifically in the Crown Tundra. It's cold there. If Macargo was there, it would cool down. It wouldn't cool down so far that it becomes an ice type because it started so freaking hot, but cooling to just a regular rock makes perfect sense to me. One funny thing about this Galarian form though is that I think it would actually be slower than normal Macargo because the lava that it used to move has now solidified into just solid rock. So it would probably barely move if it would move at all. But it's fine with that because it can just use photosynthesis. Next is another Hoenn Pokemon that did get a mega evolution, but I still think it deserves some regional variant love. That being number four, Sharpedo. Sharpedo is another classic Hoenn Pokemon that I've liked since I was a kid. And while it's never been one of my all time favorites, I've always liked it for having such a cool design. Sharpedo is known for being super aggressive and mean, the reasoning behind its dark typing. Now we currently have many examples of regional variants being dark types because they're more aggressive and mean than their original forms, like Raticate, Persian, Muk, Linoon. That got me thinking, what if the reverse happened? What if a dark type Pokemon got a regional variant and became less aggressive, thus losing its dark type. After all, at the time of writing this video, no dark type Pokemon has ever gotten a regional variant. I think Sharpedo is the perfect candidate out there for this idea because it's a shark. While there are plenty of sharks out there that are very aggressive and kill things a lot, there are sharks out there that just eat plankton. They're very docile and friendly. And I think one of those sharks that would make for a cool Sharpedo form is the Basking Shark. This shark is the inspiration for my Galarian Sharpedo design. Basking sharks have extremely tiny teeth and only feed on plankton, so Galarian Sharpedo does the same, feeding only on microscopic organisms which I am confident live in the Pokemon world. It becomes a very docile Pokemon, so its dark typing is replaced by either the normal or the fairy type. I'm not really sure which though. Honestly, it could even become just pure water type, although I don't know if that would be lame or not. Just let me know in the comments below what you think this Galarian Sharpedo's typing should be. Before I move on to the next entry, I'd like to take a quick second to thank the sponsor for this video, Moot. Moot is a free mobile app that is sure to make your gaming experience all the better. You can connect with other players, not just for chatting or browsing memes, but you can use Moot's unique looking for group feature to form a team for tons of different games, like Fortnite or Apex Legends, but also of course, Pokemon. Pokemon actually has a special feature within Moot, that being their trading board. Each one of the 100 plus games on Moot has its own lounge, and within Pokemons you can find the trading board allowing you to connect with other players and trade for the Pokemon you need, but can't get on your own. You can also customize your profile with the in-app currency Moot Coins, and you can use your Moot tickets to enter giveaways for gaming gear like consoles, controllers, keyboards, and more. And the best part is that Moot is totally free to use and enjoy. It's available on iOS, Android, and the web, so head to the link in the description below and start using Moot today. 
Thanks again to Moot for sponsoring this video, but now back to the list. Next is a Pokemon I've talked about several times over the last few years about wanting a regional variant for it, but I'm talking about it again because it still hasn't gotten one and I want it really badly. That being number five, Gliscor. Gliscor is one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. It looks fearsome and super cool, and it has such a unique design. Gliscor existing with some much needed attention given to Gligar, but Gliscor itself hasn't gotten anything since its introduction back in generation four. I really think it deserves some love. My ideal Galarian Gliscor is an electric flying type. My original justification for it as an Alola form was it living in the Haina Desert near the geothermal power plant. Then as a Galarian form, I explained it with the industrial areas of the Galar region. But now for the expansion pass, I got nothing. But I don't care because an electric flying Gliscor would be so incredibly cool because it's one of the coolest Pokemon with one of the coolest types. No matter the justification and honestly, no matter the type, if we got a Galarian Gliscor, I would be ecstatic. Next is another Pokemon I talked about wanting to get in a Lola form years ago, but obviously didn't get it. That being number six, Fortress. Fortress is one of those weird Pokemon that I can't fully explain why I like it. It doesn't look particularly cool upon first inspection, but I must admit that its fighting style of closing up its shell then spinning and slamming into enemy Pokemon is pretty freaking cool. It's gotten zero extra attention of any kind since its release back in Gen 2, and I think it should get some because it's the second coolest bug steel type and the first coolest bug steel type already got something. My original idea for a Fortress regional variant worked really well in Alola, but I think it would work well on the Isle of Armor too. Pinecone and Fortress are based on bagworms inhabiting pinecones or discarded shells. And it got me thinking, what if these Pokemon found themselves in a place where the discarded flora that they could inhabit was different? This is my idea for a bug grass type fortress inspired by it inhabiting a coconut instead of a discarded metal shell. I'll be the first to admit that it's not nearly as useful typing as regular fortress, but I still think a coconut fortress would be a lot of fun. And honestly, that's what matters. Next up is another Hoenn Pokemon, but unlike Camerupt and Sharpedo, my idea for it would be in the Crown Tundra. That being number seven, Cacturn. Cacturn is a really cool Pokemon that's unfortunately never been very good. Both of its offensive stats are great, but its bulk and speed are too poor to ever make use of its hard hitting capabilities. I wanna see it get a Galarian form that changes its stat spread to make it actually useful. This is my idea for a Galarian Cacturn, which is based on the prickly pear type of cactus. These cacti can be found in much colder climates than others, so if Cacturn was in the cold crown tundra, I thought it would be cool for it to emulate that type of cactus. Cacturn's ruby dex entry reads, during the daytime, Cacturn remains unmoving so that it does not lose any moisture to the harsh desert sun. This Pokemon becomes active at night when the temperature drops. Since the crown tundra is both cool and full of moisture, Cacturn wouldn't need to be stationary all the time. This allows it to move a lot more and become faster, changing its fighting style to be more up in your face than before. For my idea, its base 115 special attack would be swapped with its speed, allowing it to hit hard physically while still moving fast. Since it no longer only can move under the cover of night and take out its enemies using sneaky underhanded tactics, Cacturn's dark type changes to fighting. That makes a lot more sense with it being a physical attacker rather than a balanced attacker because it uses prickly pear punches. That was fun to say. Next is another Hoenn Pokemon. And yes, there's quite a few of these, but come on, I really like the Hoenn region. And this one, instead of becoming a grass fighting type, it starts as one. That being number eight, Breloom. Breloom is such a fantastic Pokemon with a great design, and I think so highly of it that I consider it to be in my top 10 favorite Pokemon. However, like so many other Pokemon I've discussed today, it's never gotten any kind of special treatment. Such a cool Pokemon deserves that. I've always thought that Breloom would make a lot of sense as a poison type. So many of its dex entries talk about how it scatters toxic spores, 
so I'd like to see it get a form that leans more into that aspect of its biology. I think if Breloom found itself in the Crown Tundra, a place that seems to be very harsh and unforgiving, it would have to become more aggressive to adapt to the situation. I think its grass typing would change to poison, like I mentioned, and I think its fighting type should change to dark, to represent that heightened aggression that it now needs. I also think its stat spread could change to being a special attacker rather than a physical attacker, because since it's no longer fighting, it's not up in your face punching, plus it focusing more on scattering spores and toxins makes more sense with a special attacker because it's attacking from a distance. All right, so this next one is another Hoenn Pokemon, surprise, but it's also one that I must admit I have thought through the least. I do know that I really want this specific Pokemon to get a regional form and or evolution, but I haven't really thought through a concept for it. This one that I'm gonna talk about is one that just kind of popped into my head and I'm rolling with it. The Pokemon is number nine, Tropius. My favorite type of dinosaur are the long neck sauropod dinosaurs, and it has been since I was a kid. So of course, I immediately liked Tropius. I think it's such a cool design to make a dinosaur known for being slow and lumbering be able to fly. Plus its tropical theme is the perfect representation of the Hoenn region. Tropius is unfortunately not very good in battle, and while its stats are definitely part of the cause of that, another big reason is that the grass flying typing just isn't very good. So I thought, what if we just gave it a typing that is good? Here's a Tropius that I made metal, so it's a steel flying type. Why did it shed its plants in favor of metal armor? Why the hell not? All right. Fine, the harsh environment of the Crown Tundra made it need better armor than just leaves, so it turned to metal, I guess. Are you happy now? As for why its fruits have turned red, that's because they're not fruits anymore, they're bombs. I don't know, I just thought it made sense for a steel flying type to be able to drop explosives. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it's cool, and that's what matters. As I said, not my most thought out idea. But also, as I said, it doesn't matter as long as it's cool. Now for my final pick, the Pokemon that I most want to get a Galarian form of all the possible ones is number 10, Zebstrika. I won't spend long discussing how Zebstrika is one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. It's my favorite animal with my favorite type. Pretty straightforward logic there. In a video I made last year about new evolutions I wanted to see in Sword and Shield, I talked about how I wanted to see a Pegasus Zebstrika, both because we've somehow never had a Pegasus Pokemon, which is crazy to me, but also because it would give it the electric flying typing, which would make Zebstrika a heck of a lot better because that typing is amazing. However, then Sword and Shield came out and we discovered that the only Pokemon who got new evolutions were ones who got Galarian forms. So for Zebstrika to get an evolution, it has to have one. However, I've really got my heart set on this specific design of an electric flying Zebstrika. So for that design to happen, Zebstrika has to change and since it, Zebstrika can't really change and be electric and then electric flying, because then Zebstrika's not changing, the electric flying design just has to be a different variant of Zebstrika to begin with. While it could still get an evolution, Zebstrika has to change. This is my design for a Galarian Zebstrika. The black and white are swapped to better differentiate between it and regular Zebstrika while still having zebra colors. I like to think that it keeps Zebstrika's speed, but swaps the attacking stats, becoming a stronger special attacker than physical. It being able to fly gives it a way to keep its distance from its enemies, so if it can hit back from that distance without having to get up close, that's a really big help for its combat. I'm not gonna get my hopes up for this because I'll admit it's a stretch, but even if it's not a Pegasus Zebstrika specifically, I'd be really happy with any kind of regional form for Zebstrika. It's a really cool Pokemon that's not gotten any kind of love and it deserves it. Thank you so much for watching and an extra special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon who are helping support the channel independent of the somewhat unreliable YouTube ad revenue. If you wanna help support me in the same way and get some cool perks like early videos in exchange, the link is in the description below. 
Also, if you want to check out some more of my fun Pokemon content, I recommend this video here on this channel, and week one of the Metronome Battle Federation, where I battle against my brother, is right here. All right, that's all I have for now. So till next time, Pokefans, gotta catch them all.